Welcome to the Rowan University Virtual Reality and Visualization Laboratory during spring semester of 2008. The goal of this laboratory is to create immersive, interactive, and navigable environments. This semester, a team of four undergraduate students have created graphical 3D models complete with realistic textures, made interactive worlds, and combined numeric data into visualizations for three projects. Specifically, this team has worked on a virtual reality representation of Rowan Hall, a visualization of sensor readings from a pressurized valve system for NAVC, and finally, an updated software system for the SNIT sensor. Hello, my name is Alan Julia and I'm a junior ECE. I've primarily been working on creating a 3D model of Rowan Hall. To create the model, I had to get reference images of the building from various angles and locations. Using these images, I began creating the general architecture, slowly adding more detail like furniture, lights, and doors. I started with the visualization lab and moved along the hallway and finally into the atrium. Autodesk Maya was used to create the actual 3D models. Polygonal modeling requires manipulating vertices, edges, and faces of objects, usually starting with primitive models and making them more complex through transformations, as can be seen with the creation of this table. Only select portions of Rowan Hall were modeled due to time constraints. Because this will be a showpiece for the VR lab, we created everything a user would need to get from the entry doors all the way to this lab on the second floor. Polygonal modeling captures the basic structures of objects, but if left in their default state, they lack any color. Steve Lapman worked on making these objects come to life by using materials and textures. Hi, I'm Steve Lapman and I'm a senior mechanical engineer. Like Alan said, I worked hard to breathe life into the models and give them color, texture, and material properties. A model is constructed of vertices and needs to find the edges and faces of the object. To render out what these faces look like, a material must be applied to the surface. This material dictates how the surface will react with the light in the scene. Materials can have high specularity, different ambient and diffuse colors, along with many other attributes. The actual color of the face does not have to be a set RGB value, but instead can be mapped as an image. This is where texturing a surface comes into play. With reference images of various surfaces, we manipulate the images inside of Photoshop to make them tileable. Tileable refers to the ability of an image to be repeated more than once and to have no visible seams. Tiling is about making a texture flow back into itself from all sides to create the illusion of an endless image. Inside of Max, I take the now tileable image and wrap it around a 3D object, in some ways much like wrapping paper around a present. Depending on how I wrap the image, different scaling and location parameters must be changed so that all the textures line up on the surface correctly. After the model is finished being textured, it is exported out and given to Ken and Mike so they can bring it into the virtual reality world. My name is Ken Bloth and I'm a junior ECE. This is my first semester on the project and one of the things I've been doing is becoming more acquainted with the virtual reality development application called Wizard. Wizard utilizes user created Python scripts to make 3D virtual reality worlds using OpenGL. One of my main tasks has been to bring the models that Alan and Steve make into VR and try to add different forms of interaction. I've worked with Mike in this area to add a few nice touches to the world and set up different areas where they can interact. One such area is at the entrance to the building where I made it possible for the user to enter and exit the building by being within a certain distance and pressing a specific keyboard button. When a user leaves the doors, they automatically close. I have also helped to code an elevator which lets the user click a button and bring the elevator to their level. When they enter, the doors will close and take them into the floor of their choosing. Here is Mike with more on some of his virtual world interactions. Hello, I'm Mike Russell, a senior ECE. In some of my time on the Visualization Laboratory project, I helped to add a few interactions that helped to make the world that much more immersive. The first was adding custom sound effects to different events that take place. This is a clip of Ken's doors opening and closing. I timed and added the sound clips of doors closing to make things seem a little more real. I also added the ability for a user to click the soda machine and have it dispense a bottle. Small details like these help to bring the user deeper and feel more involved in the virtual world. The NAVC project revolves around creating a video sensing laboratory. 
students created a preliminary virtual representation of this lab for future summer and fall use. A pressurized system along with data was visualized and will be used as a video sensing prototype. My name is Steve Davis and I'm a junior mechanical engineer at Rowan. I've been working with the Navy to apply virtual reality data visualization to a pressure valve system called the Panda. The ultimate goal of this small-scale experiment is to create a starting point for modeling more complex systems such as those found on Navy vessels. Next I obtained a 3D Studio Max model of the Panda from Pat. I imported it into Maya to gain textures and reformats so that it worked well with Vizard. I later contacted Ms. Drake and retrieved interesting data sets and labels for the data. Now that I had the model and the data, I had to write a code in Vizard that would make the two elements work together. As you can see in the demonstration, the parts of the Panda model that are being monitored have arrows pointing at them, which are a user interface. Left clicking on the arrow will display any data related to that point on the screen near the arrow. Right clicking on the arrow will make this data disappear again. I've also implemented a, a series of automatic warnings. These warnings are probably the most useful thing about visualizing data in virtual reality. They allow for rapid assessment of the system's conditions without the user knowing what to look for. For example, as the temperature rises above an acceptable point in this demonstration on the motor, it is automatically displayed and the color is changed to red to draw attention to it. My involvement in the NAVSI project was to model out the future video sensing laboratory. We were provided with a rough outline of the proposed layout. I extrapolated what the room might end up being from this image. As you can see, it contains several computer terminals, cameras, as well as the different experimental setups proposed by NAVSI. The use for this room is to provide a virtual space where we will click on selected elements such as the cameras to pop up video feeds and information. I did all the texturing for the room. Because this is a work in progress and the setup does not exist, I put it in placeholder graphics till we have more information. I included many different textures from a brick wall to a desktop wallpaper on the computer monitors. Once we have a final floor plan and are able to look at the lab, we can take reference images and construct a far more realistic version later in the summer. The NAPSI project will continue into the summer and fall, building on the work these students have shown. Our final project is for NASA, involving some recent modifications to the SNIT sensor. In an intelligent systems health management system, there are many levels of functionality. These include the visualization and data acquisition of the system. The lowest level, however, contains the sensors and actuators that are used to run the system. Instead of using normal sensors, an ISHM system utilizes intelligent sensors that are able to validate the data they are sending to the DAC system. Several years ago, Rhone University developed a Smart Networked Temperature Sensor, or SNITS, that is compatible with the ISHM systems used at Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. This semester, my task was to update the SNITS to be fully compatible with the 0.4 version of the Stennis Space Center on the wire format. This included the task of changing the network protocol from UDP to TCP IP for the client to server messages, as well as learn the IEEE 1451.1 standard. This standard governs how smart sensors should communicate with the other units of the network. Here we can see the SNITs running in debug mode, along with the tester I modified in order to validate the work. As messages are sent from the host computer, the SNITs receives the message and replies with the correct information that the host requested. The SNITs firmware is being sent down to the University of Houston testing labs in order to certify the sensor as being compatible with all the up-to-date standards. We hope you have enjoyed this overview of work done during the spring semester of 2008 in the Virtual Reality Laboratory. The following is the near-complete Rowan Virtual Reality model, missing only some minor texture work.